Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series uh, for uh, uh, December of uh, 2021. Uh, so we have a great lineup of traders, as you guys know, as you've probably seen in the uh, emails, etc. Uh, today we have Brent Kachuba. We've had him several times uh, from Spot Gamma, uh, and uh, uh, you know he trades futures and stocks. Uh, very, very unique uh, method of trading, and um, uh, we're really kind of privy here to. Uh, uh, get insight to an options expert, uh, things that, uh, you know, most of us have never had any sort of access to before. Uh, so uh, kind of kind of uh, very, very special stuff here. So let me go through the uh, biography here, um, some disclosures and some other details here. Uh, Brent's been in equities and derivatives for almost 20 years. He, he worked at B of A and Credit Suisse as both an equities broker and in algorithmic sales and trading. Following that, he was in institutional sales with Wolverine, uh, representing their electronic derivatives trading platform. Currently, Brent uh, trades some proprietary strategies and runs SpotGamma.com, which publishes, publishes various metrics on options data. Uh, here is Brent's uh, contact information here. They have a website, SpotGamma. Uh, he, um, on the Bookmap Marketplace, they have subscription service here uh, and their hero indicator as well as some of their levels and other uh, products in there. Uh, I'll show you that on the Marketplace or maybe uh, let uh, Brent show you that. Uh, and then uh, you have his email here, SpotGamma or SG at SpotGamma.com and his Twitter uh, at SpotGamma. Uh, and then some special offers uh, also from, uh, from Brent or Spot Gamma here. So I'll put these links into the chat for you guys so you don't have to copy these down. You can click on them and go directly to some of these areas here uh, if you're interested. All right, let's go through some disclosures. Uh, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. I don't think Brent's going to be trading live, but just in case. Uh, no. And then risk disclosure. Um, Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Uh, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, with uh, all of that said, let's uh, turn it over to Brent and uh, let him take it away. Thanks, Bruce. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So uh, nice to have you back. Thank you. I, uh, I'm excited to be back. I'm going to try to show my whole screen here in a way that is okay yep. for everybody. All right, there we go. So, um, I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack today, I think. Uh, so as you can see on my screen here is the Bookmap Trading Platform. And we have uh, two things that we want to talk about here before I flip to my presentation. Uh, we, one, we have this hero indicator. So for those of you who have Bookmap, you may have this indicator. And this is showing us what the real-time options deltas that have traded so far are in the S&P. So uh, if this chart goes up or this line goes up, that means people are buying uh, are, are trading in a way that creates positive deltas. So that's buying calls and selling puts. And then obviously if it goes down, people are buying puts and selling calls and those are negative delta trades. So we're gonna talk about that and what the impacts of those are. And then we have obviously our levels that uh, we push out to your system um, every uh, every morning. And these are tied to where the most gamma is in the market. So L1 is a level one, that's the biggest gamma strike in the market. So for those of you who are watching, the market now we're kind of down around 4681 and 4700 is the biggest gamma bar so to speak we're going to explain what that means uh, but that's kind of a market magnet um, if you want to put it that way so we're looking for sort of price mean reversion back up in this level so i want to touch on that before we flip to the presentation so i can make a small prediction here before we actually uh, start the show so to speak so um, again, thank you for having me. Uh, I run SpotGamma.com, and what we do is we analyze the options market to predict the way that the uh, the market itself will move. So, which way will the S and P move? Which way will single stocks move? And all of those, uh, all of our metrics come from the way that options are positioned and uh, are traded. 
So as uh, Bruce mentioned before, uh, we're integrated with Spot Game uh, with a book map and then we push out our levels, but we also create a daily note every morning where we analyze the option structure in the primarily in the S&P 500 and we email that to our subscribers. We also have a tool called the Equity Hub where you can look at over 3,000 different stocks and see what the options position is there. Uh, this is a sample of our daily notes. This is actually the daily note from this morning. Uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to sort of post what we were seeing, but basically as we head into the FOMC, we think that the markets will be pretty quiet between today through Wednesday because of the FOMC. And then we have the biggest or one of the biggest options expirations of the year coming up on Friday. So we have this interesting set of events where Powell is going to kind of charge the market. He's either going to make everyone really happy or really sad, right? And that's going to play into the options uh, expiration. And we'll explain why that options expiration could be a catalyst for a lot of market movement into the end of the year. Incidentally, if you head over to our site, spotgamma.com, you get a free seven-day trial and see today's note if you're interested in reading this in full. So enough of that, we'll move on to the actual presentation here. So we're going to start with a macro view of flow. So open interest changes once every single night around midnight. We pull that open interest in and we run a bunch of models against it to figure out uh, the direction of hedging flows by options dealers and also where those hedging flows, the significant levels. Uh, where those hedging flows may emerge. Uh, so sort of support and resistance line and then volatility is how we call it. So the, we, we have this macro we call it, which is the, the, the higher lens at which you'll view your day over the last several days. And then we have what we call intraday flows, which is which is part of that hero indicator, uh, which which actually reads all of the trades in real time. So that's, that's gonna be the second part of the talk here. So I wanna talk about an important part of flow. This is something that occurred uh, or we think was a big catalyst over the last several days. And that is the idea of VANA. And then the second one is CHARM. And these are pertinent topics here uh, because again of the FOMC, we still have the VIX up near 20, I believe. Yep, 20 spot four so far. And so when people talk about implied volatility, the change of implied volatility, they talk about this, this term called VANA. And we wanna just walk everyone through exactly what this means and, and how it affects your, uh, or how it could affect what you're trading. So, I'm going to try to use this pen tool and hopefully this goes off without a hitch uh, here. So in this presentation here, we have three different uh, looks at the same option. So all these options are the 4,600 put, which is great. And all we've done is we've, between these first two, that is the red and blue line is we've changed implied volatility. So I'm going to assume that everyone here has a decent understanding of what implied volatility is or how to look at that on your, uh, in an options montage. Um, but regardless, we'll explain how you can still look at this flows. and then. The, it has the same days to expiration. So all we've done between the red and blue lines is we've, we've changed on this plot what the implied volatility is of this option. So this is down here is the SPX index price, right? So we're currently around 4,700. So we're going to look at this slice of the chart here. And then on the y-axis, we have delta. So the symbol for delta is a triangle. And all delta is telling us is how much should dealers hedge uh, or how much would someone a buyer or seller of those options need to hedge? So if you think about one is 100 shares per one options purchased, um, then you know 40 would be half, uh, so 50 shares, et cetera. And I'm making a lot of assumptions here and generalizations of obviously you wouldn't hedge an actual SPX option with, a, with shares, you'd hedge with futures, but stay with me here for the explanation. Okay, so if I bought the put today, and let's say you know vol is a little bit low here, so I'm gonna buy this put option and it has roughly a delta of 30. So when I buy this option, a put option has a negative delta. So what does that mean? Well, if I buy a put and the market goes down, I make money, I'm very happy. An options dealer likely sold that put to me, right? So they are short a put. If they're short a put and the market goes down, that means they're going to lose money, right? That's not good. So what would they do? Well, in this case, they would sell 30 shares of stock. Again, I'm making generalizations here, but just stay with me. 30 shares of stock, that's great. Now let's say today that we're all sitting here and the market's pinned to 4,700, but Brainerd or one of the other uh, Fed members comes out and says, I think we should hike tomorrow. Well, let's say for a second now that the market doesn't drop because of that, but everyone gets worried and they start to raise their bid on options, right? And they think they're a little more nervous now. The market thinks the market's gonna move, that, that the, the future movement of the market is gonna be a little bit larger, right? So implied volatility or the, or the price to put options goes higher. Again, we're staying at 4,700. All we're doing is changing the price of the S&P, uh, price of implied volatility. Well, now you can see that the volatility of that option, the implied volatility, despite my junkie drawing there, has gone to 40. 
right? So that's good for Brent who bought this put option, but for dealers now, the, the delta of this option or the number of shares required to hedge this option has now gone from 30 to 40. Recall, they are short this put option, right? So what they need to do, remember before they had to sell 30 shares to hedge. Now they need to be short 40 shares of the hedge. So the difference between these two is negative 10, right? So to hedge my one put option, they would have to sell 10 more contracts or 10 more shares to hedge themselves, right? So this little change here means they need to sell 10 shares, 10 more shares of stock to remain hedged. Now you can imagine that as the market goes lower and implied, vol uh, and implied volatility goes up or down, you can see these deltas change, particularly as the market goes down, as we know, implied volatility tends to go higher. And so the number of shares that they need to hedge with adjusts or changes. Typically, obviously, if the market goes down, market makers need to sell more futures and that can push the market lower. Now, conversely, we're gonna have this Fed event, right, in two days time. And if I own this option and the market stays pinned, as soon as the implied volatility, as soon as that event happens, as soon as Powell is done talking, somewhat, most often, regardless of what he says, implied volatility drops, right? Because he didn't say anything to really spook the market and implied volatility drops. And what you can see happens, obviously, is the reverse. Implied volatility goes down and the number of deltas that I needed to change to hedge goes from, you know, say 40 down to 35, right? Which means that market makers who were short 40 shares, as we said before, can now buy back obviously 10 or 15 shares and that can pressure the market higher. So you can imagine that with there's literally millions of put positions in the SPY and the SPX as well as single stocks that, you know, when you look at a whole portfolio of options, this change in implied volatility here can in and of itself make options market makers have to buy and sell a lot of shares of stock or a lot of futures. And when they do that, the reality is, as you can all imagine that it pushes the price of the market up or down. So if after the Fed, implied vol is likely to come down, which means market makers can start to buy back futures. And when they do, that pressures the market higher, right? Which means that the delta of this specific put goes lower, which means that market makers can keep buying shares back, right? Because if we rally to, to, to 4,800, now the market makers only need 20 shares, right? So that's another 10 shares they can buy back. So you can see again, how these flows, the Vanna flow, specifically that little change in applied volatility. If you don't understand implied volatility, you can think of it as like the VIX. If the VIX goes up, market makers likely need to sell futures to stay hedged. And if the VIX goes down towards zero, then market makers can, that's a signal that implied volatility is coming down and that market makers can buy futures back and that will pressure the market higher. So I'm gonna take some questions in a second uh, on that, you know, actually, why don't we pause on the topic of Vanna quickly? Are there questions I can help answer on that now, Bruce? Is it, did any come in there? Um, let me take a quick look here on, um, uh, Tim has a, a question on uh, Hero um, in general. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll hold on that because I'm going to talk about Hero in a minute. So, okay, if there's no, if there's nothing immediately on Vanna, then I'll, I'm going to bring up this concept of charm and hopefully, uh, hopefully we're getting uh, it. Yeah, yeah, Rick, Rick has a question on some charm already, so, uh, 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 but maybe uh, let you explain it first. Okay, cool. All right, so let's talk about charm quickly. So for charm, let's just look at this blue line here and the gray line here, okay? Um, and I've also posted a note on our YouTube channel about this topic as well. Um, that is a little, you know, goes into the topics just a little bit more if, if that's of interest to everybody. So if you don't catch it here, you can also, I know Bruce plays a recording and then we also have a recording on our site of, of uh, this lecture. So with the blue line here, we have the same put, right? The 15 implied ball and then the gray line I want to talk about to explain charm. So all we've done here is we've changed the number of days to expiration from 30 down to 10. So the implied ball is the same, the put is the same. So in this, with this particular put, obviously, if I own the put here and nothing happens, but I advance time 20 days ahead, right? So just a couple weeks ahead, look what happens to the uh, to the delta of this option just because of that time decay, right? The delta of the option goes from about 30 down to about 15. So recall that the market maker for this single put is short roughly 30 shares here, but in 20 days time, they only need to have about 15 shares short. So every single day, right? And this isn't quite linear, but we'll, we'll explain, but basically every single day, the market makers, if nothing happens in the market, again, we stay around 4,700, 
they're going to slowly be buying back shares to rehedge themselves right here on today they need again 30 shares short but in 20 days time they only need 15. so again extrapolate this in your mind with millions of put options in the spx alone for the december expiration that's on friday there are about 3.3 million put options uh, at the end of this year they the final day of trading there's always a lot of puts as, as people have year-end hedges so that time decay factor in general is a tailwind to markets as you can imagine because every single day the, the net sort of adjustment that needs to take place is, is this right here, right? Is, is selling of big S&P put options, uh, sorry, is the buying back of deltas in the S&P put options, right? The, the slow bleed out, this is the charm trade, the change in delta due to a change in time. And this is explicitly what it is, right? The market makers who are short 30 shares, right? Will start to move back to 15. And the way they do this, they buy back futures or they buy back spiders, right? And that, that pushes the market higher. So that is kind of the drift in market pushing higher. Now, a lot of times that these two concepts, the idea of Van and Charm, they blend together a little bit, right? Because implied volatility, gamma, time, those are all related, right? You don't necessarily want to isolate all those in your, in your mind. So if you think about the market right now, those of you, of you who are familiar with our letter, uh, with, with our morning note, there's a ton of gamma at this strike, positive gamma. So what that means is that the market is likely to pin this level, right, over the last few days. And what does that pinning do? Well, if those flows pin the market, that means that implied volatility will drop, right? Because the market isn't moving around, traders' future expectations or the implied volatility declines, right, which is the Vanna trade, which, and not only that, we don't make any movement over several days, which is the charm trade, which means that Basically, we're pinning the market here, but vol is coming down, time is passing, and so that puts pressure on the market to, sh to, to make it drift higher over time, right? So you can see how those flows, and then if you start to really want to zoom back to the macro and you talk about macro flows, uh, you know, into the S&P 500 through, you know, 401k plans and capital allocations and passive investing and all the like, you can see why, you know, there's a lot of people who believe that the market just goes up over time, but the, the options market is a very interesting driver. Uh, just some things to think about there uh, from, a, from a bigger perspective. So I think there was a question on Charm Bruce. I don't know if I if I could just advance ahead now if we want to take a quick question on these two two topics. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, Rick said um, you mentioned selling the underlying to <clears throat> to Delta Hedge, uh, but what if the what if they decide to buy lower uh, strike? puts uh, at the ratio let me put my glasses on hold on <laughs> yeah uh, i think i get a general question here so we we showed one put option here as, as a very raw example of how vanna and charm can affect options and you are right that the reality of the situation is there's a portfolio of options right they have puts and they have calls now for the s p specifically our general model is that the market makers are likely to be short call options uh, excuse me, long call options and short put options. That's their general feeling. So the delta of their options portfolio nets out and they will need to hedge based on the net delta of their whole portfolio. Now they're obviously uh, attending to the other Greeks as well, particularly when you have situations you know, like the, uh, the Fed coming up and you know that implied volatility is gonna change a lot. There's a, the, the, the time decay is a big factor, right? Because a lot of options are gonna roll off on Friday and how's that gonna affect their their portfolio and their position. Um, so it's a dynamic situation. And, and we try to write that, talk about that in our notes every day. Um, but, you know, when, when you just want to zoom out and look at the basic of the flow, the basics of the flow here in the S&P, you know, this is what applies. Now, you can do the same thing. You can use this exact chart and think about it in the same way uh, when you're talking about calls in a single stock or, uh, you know, like Tesla or, or, or the like. And obviously it works the same way in commodity options as well. So if you have an idea of what the position is and how people are leaning, uh, it's very effective, obviously, to understand the way that changes in implied volatility and changes in time can affect, you know, the the underlying stock and and, and how it moves around. So um, for those of you who, you know, implied volatility is a little bit of a new concept for you. Um, you can look at again the VIX as a way to explain this. So here we have the VIX futures. Uh, term structure and what this is is obviously the 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 dot here is basically where the VIX is trading at the moment, right? The first dot, and then each one of these other dots is a futures contract out of time. 
So you can see essentially how the market is pricing volatility looking forward. And the black line is today. And the blue line is where we were on November 16th. So November 16th was kind of before the, the coronavirus, Omicron, you know, fears came out. And then there's been a change sort of in the way that people think the Fed is going to address the markets. And so what I'm basically bringing this up for is there is what I would call the FOMC premium. So what I would look for is the is volatility, implied volatility, the structure of it to revert back to where we were in November. This is assuming you know the, that Powell doesn't you know really uh, shake things up. So this is going to be this is part of that Vanna component, right? Implied volatility after the event, our expectations is that implied volatility is going to drop, right? And you can if you're a quantitative trader, you can try to quantitative, you can try to quantify this and and put it into your models and the like. But if you're just a you know futures trader. Uh, swing trading futures, you can just understand that implied volatility is likely to drop after that event. And if you think about what that means for this put is we're going to go, all put options are going to go from basically this implied volatility, the red line down to the blue line. And what does that mean? Well, that's going to be a tailwind for markets, right? Because on, as a whole, traders are likely long puts, which means market makers are short puts. And so when those short puts lose value, they can buy back futures as their hedge, right? And that, that could create a real tailwind. Now, to sort of Rick's point, what we do in, in the S&P itself is we monitor and, and we model out what we call the Vanna flow or, or the hedging flows as a whole in the market. And if you think about an, an options dealer's portfolio, again, we explain this in some other videos, but if you, if, if you think about all the options in the S&P 500, this is the y-axis, the notional exposure from a delta perspective. So market makers have all this hedging they need to do. This is the number of futures, right? If, if the if the delta exposure of their portfolio is here, they need to sell, let's say, a thousand futures to hedge out this, this exposure. And as the market goes up, they need to start selling more futures, right? To remain hedged is what this is, this is what this is talking about when the exposure goes higher. Where their delta is growing because their option, their their option portfolio is long delta. As the market goes up, that means that their their positive market exposure is growing larger. Market makers don't want to have that positive market exposure, right? They want to be delta neutral. So they'll sell futures as their exposure grows, and then they'll buy futures back as the uh, as the market comes back down. So this is the, the sort of the hedging dynamic that we cover in some other other videos. I just want to give some of you who are a little more advanced just a, an eyeball on, on some some work on excuse me on what the next steps are, uh, kind of along the evolution. Just of, just uh, a, quick, a quick a quick question for you. Um, uh, for your own trading strategies, do you um, uh, are you directional, delta neutral, or every little bit of everything? Yeah. So um, the, the the our trading strategies. What I do is I I tend to trade um, directionally based on these flows. So how do I believe that the market is going to move? Let's just talk about the last you know week, right? Um, we were down around 45.50, right, in the markets, and the VIX was over 30 which says that applied volatility was, forget this red line, like the implied volatility of the market was like up here, right? I mean, it was like everyone was freaking out. And the VIX, if you look back historically, you know, that VIX reading was extremely elevated relative to, you know, historical time frames where there was actually big sell-offs in the market. So we knew that, that the implied volatility was very, very high. And we thought that with just a little bit of good news, implied volatility would drop down, you know, even from 30 down to 20, right? Because uh, it was the, the VIX told us that implied volatility was just expecting just Armageddon. So any piece of good news would bring the VIX back down to sort of, you know, normal levels, quote unquote. And that told us that there should be a big directional swing in the market because of this. So we wrote about this in our notes that basically, you know, they came out and said Omicron is not maybe as, uh, as deadly as originally thought, um, a little more comfort because of a CPI number, whatever it may be, right? Traders' expect concerns came down, volatility dropped, which meant that market makers had to buy a bunch of futures because of, again, this, this gap, right? Uh, the Vanna flow, and that led to a pretty big market rally. And then we pinned right at 4,700, which is the, where the most gamut in the S&P is. So directionally, we like to trade that all the time. Um, and then the other thing that will play is the change in implied volatility based on um, uh, our gamma assumptions. So when we think there's a lot of gamma in the market, we don't think that the market will move that much. So maybe we'll trade some some flies and some things like that to, to express our, our, our ideas there. 
So I guess if you really want to break it down, I'll say it another way. We'll trade directionally based on the way that the options market is, is positioned. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that is just a quick idea of Vanna and Charm, and we have tons of videos. Uh, we've done a lot of presentations with Bruce and Bookmap. You can find those on, on the Bookmap channel about how Gamma works. So if you're new to the Gamma idea, you can kind of flip over to one of those previous uh, uh, webinars. But let's talk about the intraday hedging flows quickly and this idea of, of Hero. So as everybody knows, we had the macro idea, right, of, of okay, implied volatility just come down over time. We have options decay, you know, happening, which is maybe put a tailwind into markets, you know, et cetera. But open interest only updates once a day. So how do you plug sort of the gap, right? How do you know what's going on intraday? Well, that's why we built this thing called Hero. And as many of you know, um, the options market trades, you know, 930 to the close. And if there's a big put trade comes in the market or a big call trade comes in the market, that likely needs to be hedged instantaneously by dealers, right? Because they're, they have their position hedged at 930. And then as things change, as the S&P changes, as open interest, uh, as, as orders trade, new orders come in and out, um, deltas need to be adjusted. So we highlighted this example here, and this is just the, uh, what we call this is our, our hero signal. And so when you see a positive number here, what that's telling us is that positive delta options trades took place. People bought calls or sold puts. So at 13.54, some big positive delta numbers came in. Um, you don't need to necessarily need to qualify what these numbers are, but just understand that these are positive delta trades, 30, and, and these all take place right in here, right? And you can see that suddenly the flow turns negative right around 345, uh, which is here. So what this is telling us is people came in and they either bought puts or they sold calls. And then once that order flow stops, and once that order flow is hedged, you can see the market move and shift, right? So these are, these are all examples here that we highlighted of the times that the uh, that big options flows come into the market and you see the hedging, uh, the, the hedging flows will actually impact or move the direction of the market itself. Um, we put this chart together here to kind of give an explanation of exactly how this works or how you could read the signal. But basically what you need to know is a positive hero reading. Again, that means people bought calls or sold puts. You can combine that with the way that implied volatility is moving, and then you can figure out whether people are buying calls or selling puts in the marketplace, and that can have a big impact on which way you think the market is gonna move. So I'll give you an example. On Friday, we saw that implied volatility was down, but there was a lot of negative delta trading, and that told us that there's likely a lot of people selling calls at or over 4,700 in the S&P, and that is what led us to believe um, that, the, that the market would hold that, hold that area, that would hold that level. So this chart, you know, some people like to cut and paste this or keep it keep it handy as a reference. Uh, but basically, this is sort of giving what we're trying to do is figure out how people are positioned in options so that we can then predict, you know, the way that that hedging flows will uh, influence the market. So we have again this this real time signal of options trading. Um, we have the macro flows, and so I want to put just a single chart together, a single dashboard. If you're looking at Bookmap. How do you piece all this together to figure out exactly how the market is going to uh, respond to options positions? So, okay, so first we start with the gamma. This comes from the open interest levels in our daily note that we mentioned at the top of the uh, the top of the presentation. L1, L4, those are our levels that have the largest amount of gamma tied to them. And you can note here, if you see this white area on the screen, the white area is where large areas of liquidity are posted in the ES. So at around 3 a.m. we release these levels and it's fascinating to me because you will see the white shaded areas will oftentimes overlap exactly with where the big open interest is or the big gamma hedging areas are in the ES. And we think that is telling us, hey, these levels are on because clearly there's positions, there, there, there are people who are interested in trading, right, at these levels. And so the liquidity is posted out loud. They're trying to show there's liquidity at these lines. And this happens all the time with somewhat random numbers like 4660 where this liquidity will line up. So when you start your trading day, you say, okay, these are the spot gamma levels. And oh yes, look, there's liquidity posted out at these levels. So I know now some support and resistance areas uh, that may line up with this order flow. So that is sort of the, again, the macro idea. The second is, okay, look at implied volatility today, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the VIX or whatever my other, you know, my metric is where I'm comfortable. 
I can understand, okay, if implied volatility starts to come down, that'll keep the market sort of pinned or, you know, me reverting. Uh, let me, so I'm going to factor that into what I'm thinking about today. And then the second piece which you mentioned was the hero signal. So this signal here, if we sort of map this out, uh, that's what you see on this bottom line here. So you can see that as the market opens, the hero flow, the auction's real-time flow started negative, which means that people started the day buying puts or selling calls, and you can see the market comes down, and then the flow flattens out. So when the line just trades sideways, that's telling us that there's not much directional flow that's happening in the day, right? And what's interesting is the, the flow stays like that. This is Friday's chart, by the way. The flow stays like that from an options perspective. It's very muted all day. And then into the close of trading, this is around three o'clock, you can see these are positive options delta trades start to come into the market. Now we saw that there was a lot of put options that were set to expire on Friday. And we think that a lot of these got closed up into the, uh, into the expiration. And these, these are trades again, that have a positive delta tied to them, which means that market makers may have to buy futures in order to hedge this out. So you can see, this is a pretty big ramp of positive delta trading. We already know at the time that, you know, that this starts, it's just interesting that this flow seems to coincide with this drop down here, right? Um, and then this is like a shakeout. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the future just launched 20 handles. And a lot of people couldn't understand, hey, why did that suddenly happen in the close? Well, you have the big positive gamma area up here, right? So mean reversion is the, is the normal way to trade uh, in a high gamma environment. You get implied volatility was coming down. You get a bunch of real-time options, positive deltas coming into the market. Uh, and then that sets us up for that kind of, you know, feed or move up into the close. And, you know, these moves in the last 10, 20 minutes, we believe not always, but a lot of times they are driven by market makers who need to hedge by four o'clock or 415. And you'll see these types of move oftentimes fade uh, pretty hard the next trading day. You know, that was certainly the case today as the, uh, as the as the market pulled right back down now, you know, kind of into this general area if we look at where, you know, futures are trading this morning. Um, so that's kind of an example, and hopefully we're able to relay exactly how you can put the various pieces together, you know, Vanna and Charm and Open Interest and Gamma, combine those with a real-time signal uh, and, and build or enhance your, your trading plan. Um, so, you know, with that, I'm going to take a bunch of questions. I will just note a few things. One, if you're interested in any of our trading products, that is the real-time levels, subscribing for the daily notes, um, getting access to our website, you can actually do all that through the Bookmap Marketplace. This is the link Bruce put in there as well, but you can go to bookmap.com, and I think we're one of the first vendors. And the second thing is, if you felt like um, maybe we started at too high of a level today in terms of, you know, Van and Charm, you want to dig into gamut and the basics around options, Today, we launched a brand new options educational course. Uh, if you go to academy.spotgamma.com, you can get that. We'll take you all the way through what is a put and call, all the way up to how you hedge, you know, these Vanna and Charm uh, flows, how you can play gamma squeezes, um, you know, literally everything. It's a, it's a fantastic new course, um, and we're very excited to, to launch that today. So um, with that, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to take some questions and uh, see what you all have to say. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, some some of the some of these. Um, I, I I know that uh, you read some of these uh, through as well. Uh, might be even easier if you read through them. But uh, I'm wondering um, about some specific plays like uh, revolving around um, uh, expiration or or rollover periods. Uh, I imagine you you probably see quite a few uh, really nice opportunities like the one you were just showing from Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about that, Bruce. It's a it's a good it's a good point. So. Um, we um so if you think about the vix today right the vix is around 20 we know that they're the vix is being held high because of the uh, the fomc right the fomc is on wednesday and powell you know i'm not here to to offer any opinion on that fomc and rates or anything like that if the market likes what he has to say implied volatility is going to come down sharply and that as we explained with the Vanna trade today, is likely to put a tailwind in the markets, right? And if he upsets everybody and, and people don't like his message, the market can obviously decline pretty quickly. And as implied volatility right, right, uh, go, rises, excuse me, the VIX goes and the VIX goes up, that means that market makers likely have to short futures, right? And that can make the market drop faster. 
Now, what's interesting about this setup is that we have options expiration, as I mentioned before. So right now we have a, a lot of what's called positive gamma and that pins the market to 40. So with the options expiration, a lot of that pinning flow expires, it goes away. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have this big event, right? The FOMC on Wednesday, which is gonna make volatility move around a lot. And then on Friday, we have the removal of this big positive gamma pinning force. So you're gonna unpin the market and then you're gonna make volatility either rocket up or rocket down, which means that you wanna play a large directional move coming out of the uh, FOMC, particularly into next week, right? Because of this large gamma trade. Now I would note that if, if the market is upset by what Powell has to say on, on Wednesday and it crashes, which I don't think is gonna happen, but if it crashes, a lot of the puts that are holding value expire on Friday. So when those puts all expire, that can put a bid into the market because the market makers can buy back short hedges tied to those puts. So there's a lot of shifting around. There's a lot of uh, the options dynamic is very strong here uh, currently in, in the next couple of days. And that could really set up, uh, you know, and obviously people are probably sitting there saying, okay, yeah, I know that the market's going to move outside of, you know, what the Fed says. Well, you got to put everything in, in context, right? When we say a move, we think, you know, three, 4% move. 5% move into the, into the end of the week. I mean, it, it's it's really charged, right? We're not talking about sort of a breakout or a small breakout, right? We're talking about a, a big uh, a big shift, right? And so that is how I want to position myself. Uh, I don't want to try to predict which way the market's going to go. I'm going to let it show its hand. And then I know that volatility is going to keep going in my direction, right? If we start selling, we're probably going to keep going that way. So I'll try to play short and, and vice versa. If he makes everyone happy and we start to break out a little bit and the ball comes down, then I know I can ride that ride that train up, so to speak. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see, uh, some other questions in here. Um, uh, Tim is asking, since each trade is a transaction between two parties, how does the hero know if the delta transaction is delta positive or negative? Isn't every transaction effectively neutral? Yeah, so that, that's a great point. Um, there's a there's a few things that we know in the hero signal. One, uh, we're told whether an option was bought or sold. That, that actually is a, ta a tag on the raw data feed now, so we don't need to guess. The second thing to note is we're building a lot of statistics around the way that um, around this hero flow. And what we've seen is that really big trades, block trades, um, they're likely hedged before they hit the tape, meaning. Uh, that those trades are, since they're delta hedged before the trade hits, that the market doesn't generally respond to those after the fact. Uh, but we can see when there's small sweeps, uh, like for example, a lot of retail buying that we can see an impact. So statistically, we're able to start making some inferences about the type of flow that's hitting. And then, and then we can kind of take that to the next step of understanding, okay, this is likely to be a lot of retail trades that will impact the market or a hedge fund is sweeping electronically, which can't be hedged ahead of time. So that flow needs to be hedged versus kind of big chunky order flow that you know a, a bank desk does uh, which they would uh, which they would hedge first okay uh, Oliver is asking about the uh, level one level two combo etc uh, how, how how to find more information about that yeah um, so if you go to support.spotgamma.com and you just type in um, bookmap cloud notes we have an explanation that tells you exactly what the levels are combo level vulture etc lays it all out for you and uh and explains what those um, yeah and are. oliver i i've put those links in the ch in the chat there and go to webinar here so uh, you can click on those uh let's see uh edward is asking uh general options data processing question how can you re reliably predict if an auction contract is bought or sold by a customer um kind of very, very similar to uh, uh what uh, tim was asking here um, yeah so uh, we're not predicting, um, again, the, the raw, on the raw data feed, there's a buy or sell tag that, that we read. Okay. Uh, Amar is uh, defining um, uh, Vana here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I don't, I'll read this out, I guess. Uh, uh, when a volume event or, or a vol event uh, is non-event, uh, the bot puts are, put, puts are pretty much worthless. Our market makers are forced to buy back those futures aggressively as they have to be delta neutral for the other side bullish uh, as new flows come through comes in uh, it is like adding fuel to fire that's vanna 
uh, is what uh, guys is. seems to have good good hand uh, good handle on it there. Um, all right, Tim said we don't publish the VIX future curve on our site. Uh, VIXcenter.com has it. They have a really nice tool. Uh, we don't see any reason to kind of replicate that. What's a good short vol play that doesn't bleed due to the drop in vol of vol? That's a good question from Arian. Um, when you know when when vol is really high, the ratio spreads are really interesting. So you know buy one put, sell two. You know uh, a little bit further down. Some people may want to turn that into like a put fly, uh, but the flies are probably I think you know the the most interesting or one of the most interesting ways. The other would be calendar spreads. So if you want to sell, you know, this week's put or this month's put and buy something further out, that could be another way to to to, uh, to play that. And then lastly, obviously, you can trade VIX futures spreads, uh, you know, short the front month and buy the back month or, or buy a longer dated month, that, that type of thing. Neural asked, what do the numbers of the hero signal mean? So uh, those indicate to us about how many contracts need to be bought or sold to hedge. Uh, to hedge the order flow that you see come in. Uh, real indicator, how do you determine whether an option is so answering? Um, Paul asked about the live hero flow. Uh, you know, I, we showed that on the screen there, so hopefully he was able to catch a catch picture of that. Johnny asked, can we touch on the difference or similarities there might have been between this week and the week of 1122? Uh, Johnny, I would just say, you know, um, I would say that 11.22 was post OPEX, right, which is a more volatile period anyways. Uh, and so you had more, you had, you know, the market was lower, obviously, relative to uh, to what it's doing now. Today we've had kind of a bounce back. We're only less than 1% off of all-time highs. Apply volatility is still high, but we don't have that drop in the market. We don't have that drawdown at the moment, uh, which further charges or, or adds a little bit more value to puts. So. Um, yeah, so thanks, Bruce, for, for doing that. <laughs> um, so that, you know, the difference between now and then is that, number one, the expiration this week is much bigger than it was in November. Two, you have the FOMC, which is a known event that's going to cause a lot of volatility. Uh, and so, you know, there, there's not a ton of similarities other than volatility is a little bit high as it was kind of that week after 11.22. Uh, and, and the way that volatility moves over the next couple of days will really determine, I think, the direction of the market. So, you know, you could, I believe, predict, you know, which way the market's going to go. If, if VIX breaks and starts going down, uh, then you know the market's going to go up, obviously, and, and vice versa. Um, does joining through the marketplace, yeah, uh, Chris, good question. You get the same reports, you get the same everything if you join through Bookmap uh, as you do if you go through Spot Gamma. Uh, Rom, that might be a Bruce question. I think you need, you don't need a special options data feed. You, to get Hero, you just subscribe on Bookmap if you, and that will start plotting on your on your chart. So if you can see futures prices currently in your Bookmap system, then you should be able to get Hero uh, without additional subscription but besides the Hero. Uh, the source yeah, of the raw data feed for Hero, start. Peter asked, is the Oprah Options Price for Thor, uh, Reporting Authority? Yeah, uh, uh, Rom, just a quick uh, a quick um, a note on that. Yeah, the way it's set up here, um, it's a black box. Uh, so you're going to be subscribing to the Hero indicator, um, and uh, the connection's already included within it. So um, uh, you know, there's there's no worry about that. You just need to subscribe to uh, something that offers uh, uh, allows you to access the Hero uh, within Bookmap. <laughs> And, and this does work for individual equities as well. Uh, there was a question on there from Ken. So you can look at, uh, I believe it's 150 different stocks. There's a list of stocks on support.spotgamma.com, but all the big ones in there, you know, Tesla, uh, Apple, Amazon, GameStop, AMC, et cetera. Uh, Marcin, Marcin asked if you watch it again, it will be posted up on your YouTube channel, right, right, uh, Bruce? That's correct, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Okay, and I think we got basically all of this. Jay is asking about the current flows, which I was just about to ask you as well uh, in the S&P 500 here. Uh, and, and maybe some of the things you can kind of uh, uh, glean from uh, some of this information here. You see the 7K, the 2K, I, I filtered it for 2K here. 
uh, in the options. And, uh, and sure. then this kind of interesting, uh, you know, 12K on each side here. Uh, and and what what you kind of uh, gather from uh, some of these uh, um, you know higher higher uh, uh, numbers here uh, within the hero. Sure. Market. So the uh, in our morning note we basically said that we expected that the open to close range for the day would th that the market would close within 50 basis points of where it, where it opened. So that's a pretty tight trading range. It's about as tight as it gets. And the reason we said that is because there's so much positive gamma hedging flow in the market. So for positive gamma hedging. If the market goes up, dealers need to sell futures, and if the market goes down, dealers like, likely need to buy them back. So that that you can imagine, the stronger that flow is, the the less volatility, the less movement should be in the market. So we look for a very tight trading range. We don't think that implied volatility is going to change that much. The Vanna flow is likely gone because people are waiting for the Fed, right? So that tailwind to the market is is currently not in place. And also, uh, you know, the uh, 4,700 being this is, is just the, the bar with the most gamma itself. There's humongous open interest at 4,700. So there's a lot of short-term hedging flows also tied to that level. So everything from an options perspective basically says that we shouldn't go anywhere. We're gonna have tight trading ranges. The Vanna trade is not on right now because everyone's waiting for the FOMC. There is time decay, right, tied to 1217, but because implied volatility is held up, you know, that that can affect the, the that time decay, right? The options are going to decay as fast um, you know, today and tomorrow versus post FOMC. So we really expected a pretty dull market today. As I said, that that move into the close on Friday, that 20, 25 handles was was kind of hedging flow noise. Uh, so we were we figured we'd get some mean reversion there, but really at the end of the day, you know, this is about pinning that 4,700 level. So you know, it's a, it's about what 10 handles lower at the moment. Uh, sold off a little bit more, I think, than. When we opened the uh, opened the webinar, I said I think you know kind of some revert here, uh, but I still fully expect the the market to sort of drift back up into that that 4,700 uh, level. So if you look at the, the the hero flow itself, which is that orange uh, excuse me that green line at the bottom, um, 20,000 is a not that large of a number. Uh, we'll often see that hero flow be up in the 100,000 area, but what is interesting to me is that you'll see oftentimes the market will have these inflection points around big trades. And what I mean by that is if you look at just before 1015, uh, you can see the hero indicator peaked, right? And, and there was this big trade. And that looks like some type of straddle uh, or a strangle because what the green triangle is telling us is a bunch of positive delta trades went up and, and the red triangle is telling us a bunch of negative delta trades went up. So the fact that those went up at the same time tells me that, okay, somebody probably traded a straddle and the 12K is telling us that that's a pretty big trade. 12K is the number of deltas that need to be bought or sold based on that trade. So, you know, Bruce filtered out for just the, the biggest trades on the day. You can see there's only about, what, three or four of them, right? Um, there are, to be clear, I should explain this first. So there are millions of trades taking place every day in the SPY and the SPX, which is what all together create that line at the bottom of the chart. If you were to remove the filters that Bruce has on, the, the screen would be covered in triangles. You couldn't see anything, right? Uh, but you don't want to see every one lot retail trade that may come in, right? But but those one lot retail trades can all add up to be something meaningful. So that cumulative indicator is picking up every single trade. And then on screen, we only kind of want an idea of the really big trades. Because again, back to the 1015 print, you can see that the, the deltas were strongly positive, and then you get this big straddle print, and then the market fades off from that level, which I always think is really interesting. So why did the market fade there? I don't know if there was news or not. But if I couldn't find a decent explanation, I'll go, okay, it's, you know, liquidity today is probably not that great. Um, something seems tied to that trade, right? Some hedges likely could have been tied to that trade and that could have, you know, sparked just a little bit larger of a drawdown. But um, anytime the order flow or the market changes around these big prints, you know, you can assume that there's hedging flows tied to those prints and that can explain a lot of, a lot of market movement. You know, that, that, that's not to say that we're looking at that 12K there and predicting that the market was just about to drift because that's a delta neutral trade. But the fact that the market did make that movement after that trade is giving me a piece of information uh, that I otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, so that's that's sort of how I would look at the layout of what so far happens again, uh, what's happened today. And again, everything we believe is that the market should close within 50 bits of where it opened. So, you know, if we opened that, uh, We officially opened at 46.97. So, you know, if you add or remove uh, about 25 points from from just call it 4,700, we think the market closes within those boundaries. 
as a, a, a very low volatility day. Okay, let's see. Uh, Peter, uh, yeah, the uh, the hero indicator works for the, the ES and uh, SPX and SPY. Yeah, that's right. So it's important to note that the spider options flow account even though it's a smart contract, there's so much volume. It can be larger flows in the SPX, not always, but especially on days where there's not much activity, uh, where, where the market's more quiet, uh, the spider flow will be bigger than the SPX. So it's important to watch both. The ES indicator that you see here is total S&P, so that's spiders and SPX combined. Um, and then the spot gamma levels only apply during market open regular trading hours. I would say that they're strongest when the market is open. However, uh, we have many traders that are based overseas and they use the levels throughout the evening. Uh, well, my evening, their daytime. Uh, for instance, a lot of guys sitting over in London will trade those. They'll, they'll trade the, the, the ES futures uh, throughout the day and they say the levels work great. We release the data at 3 a.m. and you know, to that, I would just note that market makers have exposure, right, 24-7, and most of them have desks over the world uh, so that they can continuously be hedging. Um, they can't afford to have their basically, you know, a full risk position on and just sleep through the night. You know, if something major happens overnight, um, they need to be able to react to that. So most of those desks, I would assume, Citadel and the like have, you know, 24-hour hedging, 24 hedging operations. And so that's why I believe the level should uh, work just as well uh overnight as they do during the during the day session okay so uh i put the uh link in there for the recording um in in the chat as well uh along with uh uh the spot gamma um uh, links for the website etc so uh, you guys can uh, find all the information there um i think we've gone through all the questions is there anything else that you, you wanted to cover uh brent uh, no, I think I, I I think I got it all. I hope everyone will sort of get something out of that. <laughs> too technical. Um, I started getting a little too technical. I think when I uh, after after launching, I had that I had that. Uh, I mean, it's just it's really. If you have really... any questions? Uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Again, we have a bunch of videos on our uh, website to help explain the stuff, and then the new uh, educational series that we launched at academy.spotgaming.com will baby step everybody from you know. What is an option to, you know, exactly how you can trade some of these uh, Vanna and Charm flows? So um, please feel free to check out that as well. All right. Well, uh, I think that uh, that wraps it up then. Um, so, uh, you know, excellent stuff uh, uh, as as always, Brent, uh, and just uh, fascinating stuff. I mean, like uh, uh, really starting to understand, you know, um, bigger players behind the markets here. Uh, and uh, and their activities, a, a level of transparency we've never really seen before. Um, and uh, I know that Hero Indicator, when it first came out, it was new to you as well. Uh, you hadn't had access to this kind of information. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, now 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 here it is, uh, right on the chart. Yeah, and, and it's, it's fascinating to watch. I mean, you can see that you know, when the market is really moving on, on, on big volatile days, you can see the options flow change, you know, and that's telling us that people are done buying puts or they're starting to sell their puts or they're starting to sell their calls on rallies or whatever it may be. And you can see that flow change and it, and it changes the market. And, and I think it's a really interesting supplement to, you know, however it is that people like to trade, right? Um, whether you're a swing trader or, or scalper or, you know, use Fibonacci or whatever else, you know, it may you may use. Um, this is a great supplement, right? Because the options market is just, we're, we're just, we're, we're translating data for people here, right? Um, and, and I think there are flows that, that anyone can have to find value. Yeah, that's right. I mean, like, uh, just, just a point, and I, I wanted to get, get kind of, um, uh, you know, pick your brain a little bit on this. Um, you know, a lot of times, like, uh, with the, the um, market by order data, there are stops and icebergs. Uh, you know, with the iceberg uh, transactions we can see uh, in the S&P or in the CME uh, uh, products, um, you know, you, you'll see like maybe some massive iceberg order um, transactions and, you know, and a reaction in the market. Uh, it mm -hmm. might be short lived. 
uh, and then it might blow through that area uh, later. Uh, but uh, and maybe they add more later as well. Um, what I'm getting at here is the larger player activity. Um, yeah, you, you'll see some sort of reaction, uh, but the overall market still continues uh, and, and rather, you know, dominates uh, the, the price action. Uh, do you see a lot of times where the um, hedging uh, starts to maybe maybe it's not just one event and, and and then the market reverses or something, but you'll start to see it happen multiple times. Uh, and then that gives you more insight uh, to uh, a potential reversal or a potential move or um, et cetera. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think a lot of times that, you know, people have a feeling, you know, that maybe this is a bottom for the market or, um, you know, our top or, you know, are looking for an explanation or they're looking for an explanation of what just happened. Like, okay, market just dropped 10 handles. I don't understand why. And a lot of times it is because of the options market. So, you know, if you know, for example, that the market just dropped 10 handles because someone just put up a big put trade and, and the and futures uh, and market makers that hedge that, we'll feel much comfortable playing that, buying that dip, right? Or playing that mean reversion. If you know that's the reason why, as opposed to, oh, I didn't just miss some piece of news, right? Um, or you'll see in, in an example like with Tesla, which was really useful where, you know, the stock was trading up, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent a day, right? And how did you know when to take your long off or how did you know, you know, when to try to short that stock or, or, or whatever it may be? And you could see the options flow change in that name around, particularly around big strikes like 1100, 1200, right? Uh, but that gave a lot of people confirmation of feelings or thoughts, right? Or if you think, hey, I want to short this thing, but the deltas keep going positive, that hero signal keeps going positive, that's telling me that people are buying calls and I don't want to step in front of that, right? You know, so I want to, I want to let or, or, you know, let my, let my trade run. Um, unfortunately, with, you know, the hero indicator at the moment, it's not showing us really anything at, the, at this moment. It's a, it's a quiet market. I would just, I would call this drift really, right? What's taking place. Uh, yeah, it's not necessarily mean reverting at the moment. Um, but the options flow is, is really light. I mean, 6,000 on the hero indicator uh, is very small. Uh, and so, you know, there's just this kind of drift taking place uh, out of the next really two days. Yeah, I, I mean, that's another fascinating read um, uh, is the, the drift um, that you, you've, you've mentioned this on, on uh, past webinars as well, uh, of not reading some sort of direction, but understanding like when there's no direction, uh, and, and what the significance of this might be um, in, in the analysis, because uh, uh, they're finished uh, with their work. Uh, they've already done it uh, in, in the past, potentially here. Yeah, and I mean, you can look over the last just, you know, what is that, about 10 minutes, right? And the hero indicator's gone, you know, fairly steadily down, right? I mean, that's not a big hero indicator change, but, you know, you can see the, the, that maps the price action, you know, the price action maps directly to the way the S&P is moving. But, you know, and, and some people I think have a hard time understanding this, that the, the price of the S&P basically has no influence at all on what the hero indicator is, is putting out. Um, the, the price movement of the S&P does not matter whatsoever, right? This is purely based on what options trades are coming into the market? Are they are they calls? Are they puts? Are they bought? Are they sold? And what is the hedge ratio of that? And so, you know, I think a lot of people look at this and they'll say, well, all you're doing is basically like mapping out how the S&P price is changing. And, and that's kind of what it looks like now. But what I, I think what this is telling me is this is drift. There's light options flow, but the market is moving what seems like almost sort of in a way lockstep with, uh, you know, the way that the, that the options are trading. I mean, you can see here that obviously after that straddle, the flow turned negative and then bottomed and the S&P kind of went down and bottomed. And, you know, here again in the last 10 minutes, the hero indicator showed that there's some negative deltas that had to be hedged and the market drifted lower. And now that that hero indicator bounced a little bit, it's very subtle and has moved up. You can see the market now is not moving lower, you know, that much lower. So this is just, again, this is real drift. These aren't strong flows that are in the market. And I mean, I look at this like, like this, right? Options market makers have to trade every single day, day in and day out, no matter what, right? Um, and I think their flow over that long term dominates the market. Now, when you have news event like the Fed or quarter inflows from pension funds or you know credit funds start hedging using S&P puts, whatever it may be, that flow is gonna override, at least you know, particularly in the short term, 
you know, the market making hedging flows. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the most, the, the biggest, most consistent entity trading entity, I think in, in the S&P is, is, is market makers uh, because they always have exposure and that exposure is always changing. And because they're hedging volatility, you know, they, they constantly need to adjust those hedges. It's not that, hey, they can afford to, to sell, you know, 50,000 futures and, and be done. No, if the market goes up, you know, 20 handles, they got to make another adjustment. And, and as people keep trading, right, as those 12,000 lots come in, et cetera, you know, things need to change. But th there's another, you know, Bruce adjusted the settings on the chart. So you can see the big triangles are, are fairly large trades. 12K is not, I mean, 12K is a decent size. You'll see stuff in the 20s, 20K. Uh, but you can see over the last, what is that, 45 minutes, nothing has happened, right? No big trades at all have taken place. So that, that kind of tells you, again, it's just sort of drift, right? No one's really putting on big trades ahead of that phone, Steve. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. So uh, um, if there's any more questions here, um, a few more a few more have trickled in. I, I don't know if we have any more time with you or not. Brent, it's been an hour so far. Uh, yeah, I, I unfortunately have to have to kind of cut it there. We bumped up, bump, bump, uh, excuse me, bumping up against our, our time limit here. Um, if you have questions, though, you know, please feel free. You can email me uh, at sg, excuse me, at info at spotgamma.com. Um, you can always get me on Twitter uh, as well. We're at spotgamma, and those are the two best places to uh, get in touch with us. Excellent, excellent. Um, well, thank you very much, Brent. Uh, as always, uh, you know, a pleasure having you here, uh, and uh, and we'll do it again. Awesome, yeah. There's a there's our last sort of good example. It looks like a little option trade went up, and there you go. You get a little movement in the S and P. Nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bruce. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you everybody for taking the time to to listen to our uh, webinar here, and um, and look forward to speaking with you all again in the future. Okay. Thanks, Brent.